Hey everybody, we've got a great episode here today. We actually have a favorite of ours back on the show today, and I'm going to share with him one of our favorite things that he told us before, and we're going to learn all about a new book he's got and everything that the planners helped him do, and so that's what we're doing today, so let's get to it. That works, right? Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Nick Jaworski, your lovable producer, and I am here with uh, a Jake Brown who's got kids in the background. It's real life. Jake, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Nick. Happy, Thanks, happy Monday, I should say, first. Oh, man. Mondays are good now. Not so much back in the day, right? Oh, this is we're already into. It. I love this. <laughs> You know, I, I we should probably like come up with our own like full focus anti Garfield, right? His whole thing is that he hates Mondays. Like we could we could come up with like whatever Garfield is backwards and he like loves Mondays. <laughs> and he's a dog, he's not a cat. Like just do everything opposite. He hates lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all we got. Jake, I didn't tell you this before, but uh I if I had look, I've heard more focus on this than any person on the planet, right? I'm in the recordings, I edit the record I I hear it all the time. And uh, I'm pretty certain that your hack in the planner to rip out the introduction of the planner so that the first thing you see is the goal page is the most referenced thing that we like hack on the show in the last year or whenever you told us. Oh, well, yeah. So it comes up all the time. Now, why don't you go ahead and explain it to anyone who missed it the first time? If I didn't, maybe I just said all of it. But yeah, did I that, miss anything? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. I have two, like you said, the two hacks that I recommend. Um, one of them, as soon as I hand somebody a planner, the first two things I tell them to do is open up the front and either fold back or rip out that front, um, the couple pages right there, so that when you open your cover, um, you're right there at the goals. You don't need the contents. You don't need that stuff. Um, it's just when I open up the planner, I want my goals slapping me in the face. Yep. Um, you're just, you're in it and you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, and another thing is... Um, which since then I have found is other people, like if you're hiding your goals, like if it's somebody opens up and your goals are right there in the front, if there's a little bit of accountability there that if somebody picks up, hey, who's is this? What is this? And they look at it and your goals are right there. Okay. A little bit more skin in the game. The other one is when I hand somebody a planner, they're always afraid of it. Like this is a nice thing. They're, they're afraid of it. I say, just grab ink, pick a page and scribble, mm -hmm. put something on there, put ink on the page because now you're using it. You're not afraid of it. Yeah. I love that. Obviously, the loose leaf planner, you can just remove whatever you want and you can start with your goal. So that's a great note for everybody. Mm -hmm. But also, don't be like me. So what happened was that Jake said this in a recording. He said, tear out your first couple of pages. Um, and I did it so fast before he warned me. The split. You actually have to keep like a quarter inch or a half inch of the yeah. page in the book. Otherwise, you mess with the binding. So yeah, it'll split. you'll have to tape, you have to tape yeah. that. that scene so I had a together. whole quarter. I was like, Jake, no, but, <laughs> <laughs> but just, you know, you can be more careful than me and it'll be great. But, uh, it comes up all the time. I love that hack. Jake, you've got some exciting news. We love to support our community members, our, our certified pros. What's, what's the story for you? All right. Um, so the 15th of this month. Um, I have a book coming out. I've been working on it for a while and uh, really uh, just really excited that it's coming out. It's actually a typo. Um, mm. So so my book, I I go into in the introduction, I talk about it and I sent a memo to somebody updating them about a leadership meeting. But, you know, I, I misspelled leadership. The uh, mm. last letter got swapped out and uh, it became kind of an internal joke. And what I realized was it was our leadership meetings, but they weren't going anywhere. We weren't actually mm. helping the team that we were like leading. And um, that typo came back time and time again as we fixed the meetings, as we worked on them. And we started actually like, how did I start leading people? So the subtitle of the book is uh, Survive a Bad Boss and Have Fun at Work. Yeah. Um, and really, that is uh, that's what I started doing um, to help people. Now, wait, just so I understand the situation. So... Uh... You were surviving a bad boss. Correct. Does this person know that you wrote a book? <laughs> so it's it's come up. 
um uh-huh. kids come up and i'll say it is uh you know as old memoirs you know that the names have been changed the locations like mm-hmm. that stuff has all been filtered through but yes they do um we went through rounds and rounds and got better and it's one of those things that it was about it, it's it starts out sounding like it's about the bad boss mm-hmm. but it's really the goal of the book is to help people realize that they are in charge of themselves that whether you quit or whatever you do or staying in the place, your development is up to you. Um, you can take ownership of that. And one of the lines in the book that I just love, um, it actually, I, I don't remember writing this. I remember it was in my notes and I just remember looking at it and thinking that's that's the point. Um, I say, uh, you have to stop trying to find happiness at work and pack your joy like a sack lunch the night before and bring it with you. Ooh. And the idea was, this sets you up to have fun, to find that joy and to bring it into work. And when you start doing that, you'll gather, like people will come to you, like you will draw people, whether it's the people that work alongside you, under you, or if you're dealing with a bad boss, um, you can kind of, if you start mentoring yourself and moving yourself forward, um, other people will move as well. It sounds like it's about the bad boss. It starts a little bit because that was my mindset in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but then ironically through, uh, not ironically, but the reason we're here. Um, as we go through the process, um, one of the things that came out of it was um, the full focus planner was a way that I really started mentoring myself and adding accountability to myself. Um, because uh, one thing I always think is a lack of accountability feels like freedom until you realize you're going nowhere. That's right. Um, and that's, that's right. kind of how, how it was. But I had to put, um, I had to discipline, I had to add discipline to myself. And I think of that as it's accountability that I place on myself. You know, you owe it to your future self to make progress. And that's discipline. It's it's the actions that you pay, like, for the future self, for the future that you want. We hear the word discipline, and it just, it just sounds, like, bad. Even, like, I think kids oftentimes think, like, I'm being disciplined by an adult, which, yeah. of course, is no fun. Or even the idea of, like, having discipline sounds boring. Uh, <laughs> we, we've turned uh, it into a bad thing for sure yeah and and so uh, there is an element of like how do we like reclaim that idea even when you say it like i obviously have learned I'm a, I'm a trained musician uh that's a discipline right um how do we could we like rethink a way to to reclaim that word in society or is there a more fun word that we could use that people would be less afraid of honestly i think it if you could find that and write that book, that would be amazing. Okay. Um, it's called, uh, ooh, Jake, here it is. God, it's just off the top of my head. It's called, the book is called, it's not discipline, it's dis a win. <laughs> there it <laughs> that, is. That actually sounds like a jam, John Acuff type Listen, book. Yeah. Nobody, no, nobody on this, listening to the show, watching this show, that's mine. State market, <laughs> that happened. Dis a win is my concept. Uh, but... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, we've talked about this before, we talked a little bit before the call about your relationship to the planner and this book itself. Right. Right. Um, obviously, uh, you use the planner in your own life with your own coaching, but what's the relationship between um, Jake Brown, guy, human being, and Jake Brown, author, and how does the planner fit into that? Oh, yeah. So... First off, the planner's mentioned. There's a chapter where I really talk about the planner. Uh, it comes up. Uh, the chapter is called Council of Elders. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a point where nobody was investing in me, but I had to figure out how to grow anyway. And part of what I did is I realized that I needed discipline. Um, and I talk about that actually in another chapter called uh, Congratulations, You Failed a Personality Test. Here's a cookie. Yes. Um, I want my cookie. (laughs) And in that, I realized that I was doing a lot of the wrong work and I wasn't being disciplined and I wasn't, I I didn't have structure enough to where other people could depend on me. And when I took that assessment and I realized that, realized that gap and that I needed to grow into that, like the next week they announced that the full focus planner was coming out and I was like pre-ordering, like I didn't even read the whole email. They're just like, Hey, this thing's coming. I was like, bam, click on it. And I (laughs) pre-ordered and I'm like, Mike's never steered me wrong. We got this. Um, So that is where I met the planner. And then as I was going through and taking on discipline, like I started reading more 
and realized that that was important and which was hard for me because I'm dyslexic. So mm. going up through school and everything, that was really, really difficult. Well, as I started reading more and taking in more information, I was surrounding myself with this, this wisdom of others. And that is where the Council of Elders came from, is mm. I started setting a goal or a part of my life that I wanted to grow in. And I would find somebody who I would say, I want to grow up and be like them. Like, for instance, Bob Goff is a good one. Um, you know, Michael Hyatt's books, like different people like that, that I would say, this is somebody that I want to be like. I want to absorb some of that. So I'd find this council of elders, these voices, whether it be music or books or whatever. And I surrounded myself with them. And I used the planner to, so that I wouldn't get, because I got overwhelmed real fast. I used the planner to map out and put those in a um, rotation of who I was reading, who I was basically hanging out with, even though I didn't really know them. I was like through their books, their music and stuff, kind of absorbing uh, their thoughts, their wisdom. And then um, as I was talking to other people um, and kind of going through, I started reaching out to a couple of people, just started having conversations, Zoom calls, coffee meetings, and really just found that a lot of people hated work. Like there's this phase where it was just really prevalent that everybody hated their jobs that was so bad um and to be honest a lot of them were really it came down to they really felt like they had a bad boss um and part of that was unmet expectations or unclear they hadn't told their boss what they're expecting or whatever lots of different reasons but um through what ended up being about 200 conversations talking about bad bosses again scheduled i'm putting these in my planner i'm making forward and then one day i went back and looked at that quarter you know, at the end, you look at your notes and everything. And I go back and I start flipping back to the quarter and realize that this was a thing that so many people were struggling with. Um, there was this massive pattern. And of course, I'm in it. I didn't notice it. But when I got to my, you know, my quarterly preview and I went back and looked at the past quarter, it was like, there's a theme to these conversations. So I saw, man, I need to do something about that. Like, I should organize my thoughts on this, my notes. And I started organizing them. And I had this idea. It's like, I'm going to write a book. And to be honest, um, everybody laughed, like the couple of people that I told, they laughed because they knew me, they knew the dyslexia. They're like, man, you're like, that's a long commitment. You're not going to do it. And <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks yeah. For yeah. Right. Well, they, they loved me enough to, to tell me what was the truth. Um, but back to that, that building discipline. And what I started realizing is if I really wanted this to be a thing, if I wanted, if I owed it to my future self to be an author, to write a book, to get this thing done then I needed to do all those little steps today when they're due. So I broke them down and um, I call them laps. I didn't think of the whole race. I just thought of laps, you know, like race car. I grew up in Indianapolis. So, you know, all the laps, you just lap and lap and lap. So I would just break it into the little laps and uh, put those in my planner. And when I started thinking of those little chunks and getting to them, and I broke it into three parts, to where um, I wasn't just working on one thing at a time because I would burn out and get bored. But I thought of it as like a braid to where it's like I would work on one for a little bit and just as the time that I didn't like it anymore, I would miss one of the other parts. And I would lap, I'd like flip sure. that one back over into the middle and focus on that part and then flip another one back over into the middle. And by having those little laps that I would just keep braiding in front of myself, it was like I was just continually sprinting like yeah, I was so sprinting you... each one of those laps instead of seeing it as a big, long process. And it was really funny because I remember like I'm just working on it and everything. And I remember one day I actually um, was working. I was writing and editing stuff. And then I finished. I walked outside. And I told my wife, I said, I think I'm done. I think I just finished the manuscript. Like I didn't see that coming hmm. because I had just been so focused on those little sprints Yeah. that all of a sudden it was like, there's nothing to flip back over. Like I just finished the first draft. <laughs> well, and that's very you know, full focusy, right? This idea, you take your big goal, you break it down into the, you know, my, one of my favorite, and I think most insightful parts of the planner and the system, uh, you know, weekly previews, great. All the things are great, but I love in the goal detail pages when it says, what are the next steps? It yep. doesn't tell you, it doesn't say all the steps. <laughs> it cool. just says what's next. And that's easy. Like, it's always like, well, I got to make this phone call or I got to do, you know, I'm going to, get the gym whatever the next step is and i always find that's like the thing that keeps me that can push me forward is to go i don't have to solve all of it and in fact i think michael and megan would tell us that you shouldn't be able to solve all of it right 
right? So but it is just being able to do these little bits you, and push you yourself a, forward. Yeah, I'll say you have a horrible perspective from the beginning. You know, it's like at, at the end of every quarter, I look back at the beginning where I started and I was like, oh, wasn't I cute? Like when I thought <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Um, but like you were saying, you have those the goals and you look at what's the next steps. But what was really interesting was as I was doing my weekly previews and stuff, I just go back to my goal. What are the next steps? Why well, assign those straight in to my week? Oh, interesting. And then I sprint yeah. into those every week. Well, then every week as I'm doing my weekly preview, I go, well, what are the next steps? What days am I going to do those? And I assign them on like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, because I do it Sunday night. I, uh, I assign them out. And then when you get to that day, you're just mad dash checking those boxes. Because on Sunday nights, I think, do I love this goal? Who do I want to be? How do like, what do I have mm -hmm. to do? And then I assign it. And then when I show up on Thursday morning, I just do it because I decided to do it. It's already there. I don't have to decide if I'm going to do it. I just do it. Now, Jake, if I remember correctly from our previous conversation, you're a you're a creative type. Your your entry into this world of like of coaching and other stuff came yes. for, as a way to serve uh quote unquote creatives. creatives. Right. Which by the way, I maybe I told the story before, but when I was in living in St. Louis, I'm back here now, but I lived in St. Louis and I was just like a guy. Like, oh, Nick's a guy. And then I went to California and then everybody was like, well, of course you act like that. You're a creative. It was very strange. Yeah. Like I was like <laughs> a guy, maybe weird in St. Louis. And then in California, they're like, oh yeah, we get it. You're just, you're a creative. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so you came into it as a, as a quote unquote, a creative. And, but when I hear you talk about the planner and the system and how disciplined, there's that word again, yeah. disawind. You are about it. I hear somebody who um, is like very structured and has got a lot of freedom out of that. What? But you know, as well as I do, that that's really that can be very hard to get to. And it, I'm curious about how you got there. It, it, <laughs> it definitely can. Um, one of the things I'll say is it was a breakthrough moment for me where I said, I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, I can blame the planner. Ooh. Like if you, oh, if you write it down and something doesn't this. work, you blame the planner and you're like, that thing failed me. Oh, this and is then, like, then you don't own it. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was a big thing for me. And then, um, the idea of trusting structure, actually, um, I'm a dad, I have four kids and it came from watching my kids climb on something that they shouldn't climb on. Like it was wobbly. And what I realized is as the kids were climbing up and trying to jump off of it, like they weren't jumping far. They weren't having as much fun. Like they're having fun climbing up it, but getting down, it wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking if that structure is solid, then they leap out because they feel safe to return to it. They can risk more because they felt safe. The stability was there so they can risk more. And then they come running back and climb right back up. Mm -hmm. But when that structure is wobbly, you spend all your time trying to make sure it doesn't fall apart. I think that that, that sort of visual of the kids on the, rickety you know pile of boxes or the you know the tree that's maybe they shouldn't be on two by fours they nailed together it was yeah you iffy. know that's like so perfect i love that analogy i love that that visual so much um i'm stealing that forever and ever um copyright that me along with disawin it's time to do random questions that nick has that he thinks of or remembers bring it <laughs> <laughs> so that's just every i'm just that's the name of it right now we'll we'll come back and maybe deal with that some other week but of course the key question that everybody always has to fight about is when do you do your weekly preview sunday evening sunday evening and then do you set your big your monday big three then or do you set your big threes the day of I set most of my weekly big three, at least typically two for every day during my weekly preview. Oh, interesting. I go ahead. Like I said, remember, I sit down and I'm in the big picture and I lock it all out so that when I start on Thursday, my ADHD, like I'm not going to get distracted. Like I, I can get in and just start knocking stuff out because at that point, I kind of owe it to myself mm -hmm. to get rolling. Yeah. Um, obviously things have to be flexible. You have to be, you know, gracious with yourself and stuff as you get into it. But yeah, I locked down most of my big three for the week during my uh, weekly preview. Now this came up recently in another conversation with another certified pro, but I had never like formalized this thinking, but when you write in your daily big three, do you think of them as being sequential in importance? Because apparently this, 
he said this and then people in the community started talking about how they did and so now i'm now i'm just going is this a thing people are doing i think that would that'd probably be good for me to try but i don't because mm -hmm. when i put them in there um when i put in my big three i put them in there they land and i assign them before i know the priorities mm -hmm. so i mean like there's sometimes um you know like um there's sometimes these sound like little ones that some people don't agree with but um we have a kid my daughter has really bad allergies so the first of the month change the air filter it has to happen that day like it's something that it sounds like a little thing but for me Not your if i'm if i'm going to protect my family it's like i'm going to change the air filter and when i sit down i open up my planner like change the air filter that's on there i do it before like if i sit down at my desk i get up and i go change the air filter and come back you know this is interesting. I actually might have to try this sometimes like in a week. If I know I've got like a big, you know, like a big boulder, they would say like a recording right. or a thing I have to do. I might write that ahead of time in my big three, just knowing that during my weekly preview. But I don't know if I've ever gone through and did like 70, 80 percent of my daily big threes when I'm doing my weekly preview. And I think that I think that might solve some general like fatigue issues for me. Yeah. Um, just the decision making that you yeah, don't have to do. Just, I mean. I honestly am probably I'm heading into lunch every day before I have to make a big decision. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm okay. Okay. Tonight. Spoiler, everybody. It's a Sunday. Uh, when I do my weekly preview, uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see if I can fill it up for the week. And I think I can already feel that I think it might be difficult to do at first. It It is because you're making those decisions. And it feels really good to just go, ah, I'll decide Monday morning. I'll decide yeah. Tuesday morning. Yeah. Like, I'll decide all those things. But again, like I said, the when I was writing the book and when I was looking at those laps, if you think of, say, every week's a lap on the book, I'm just going to go a little bit further. I'm going to go a little bit further. And if you say, this is what my lap is going to look like, okay, how do I break up that lap this week? Yeah. And if you just put that down, um, so one of my big three every day had something to do with my book when I was going through that. Sure. So I just knew, like, what is the next step? What is the next step? What is the next step? And if you line those out, um, again, there, there's deciding and doing, and the brain has trouble doing both at the same time. Mm. So if you yeah. just have a set time where you go, boom, I'm just going to decide. I'm going to make the decisions, and this is what I owe myself. And then every other day, you wake up, you grab your tea or your coffee, and you just dive into it without deciding what you're going to do. Because um, that's always, for me, is the biggest distraction, is deciding to start. Sure. Um, I don't. I dawdle, I slow, I stutter step. But if I sit down and it's like, you know, you need to, you know, just start writing this story. Or um, on some of them, what I would do is I would actually just do an audio recording mm -hmm. of me telling the story. Yeah. Like I would I've tell a that. story, record it, and then work backwards to turn it into text, like write it out from there. But if I just had that as a checklist, you know, sit down, start recording the story. I'm not deciding what story. I'm not deciding how I'm going to start. Just dive in. Okay, of course, my favorite question is, what are you using to write in your planner? What am I using to write in my planner? Yeah. I have, um, this is a Baron Fig Squire. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my go-to. Um, they are balanced really well, and I'm left-handed, so rollerball pins hate me, um, but these guys hold up. All right. Well, Jake, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a blast. We should have you on more often. See that beard of yours. But uh, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're going to sell some books. The book comes out next week. Where can people go to pre-order or support the book launch or whatever we need to do? Thanks, Nick. Um, you can definitely uh, check out the book, learn more. If you go to jakebrown.co, um, you can go there. You'll learn more about me, but uh, there will be a link where you can buy the book. And obviously, you can just hop over to Amazon and look for it there. Uh, well, Jake, thank you so much for joining us. And remember that this is the most productive podcast on the internet. So make sure to share it with your friends. Make sure to join the Full Focus Planner community on Facebook, where all the cool people are. And uh, make sure you're here next week with another exciting episode. Until then, Jake, join me. We're going to say, stay focused. Perfect. First try. <laughs> no. That's it. That's the end of the show. <laughs>